Hello everyone, welcome to the Imperial Holonet, I'm GID123. And I'm Bradley Dorantilis. And we are here with the news today. Cole could not be with us at the time, but he'll be back soon. Alright, Red, where should, do you want us to start? Uh, I guess we'll just start with minor Star Wars news. Uh, people stupidly thought there was a Han Solo trilogy, because untrustworthy news sources said there was. People go <laughs> to Star Wars Underworld or making Star Wars for this th these sorts of things. Hey, this uh, is how we got idiotic stuff, like... Recent. Fall of the Resistance that went on for months before it, people finally realized maybe it's important to go to a Star Wars <laughs> news site for Star Wars news. Or, or, instead or don't of... forget of Rogue One in peril reshoots. Oh, God. Although I yeah, you see, after one. all this shit, people just need to, to, to shut up and just only go to the most trustworthy Star Wars sites. <laughs> and those in Underworld and Star Wars, making Star Wars are the, probably the best ones. Yep. I love those guys. I listened to a podcast of theirs yesterday, and they went on for a couple hours debate of like how an Ahsoka film could work and if it's feasible. It was great. <laughs> I need to watch more of the, their, their videos. They're awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh, listen to their, next, their current one. It's great. Um, but, yeah, um, he, he has been signed on for at least three films, not three solo films. <laughs> he might be in Rogue One, so that, that's, that's probably been, what that, that is. That's debunked, though. That was officially debunked. Oh really? So it's Catherine just Katie's. gonna be yeah. uh, it's just gonna be Panda Baba and Doctor Evans Evans. Yeah. Um, Which I love the fact that those two are gonna be in the film. Like, why aren't they in there? I don't know. Maybe they'll do the robot chicken thing of like uh, Panda was a uh, like architect and now he you now he loses his job because of Doctor Evans and it's like no poor Panda Baba. That'd be awesome. Um, In fact, they need to put out a figure of him because I, I want that. Although there was, they did for vintage collection, and it was awesome because they gave his actual name and they put Walrus Man underneath because that's what the Kenner figure said. Oh, that's awesome! I did hear on something interesting from an interview when they were talking about the Han Solo film, and it said since Han Solo's early adventures don't have to be tied in with the Empire, it's a good way to start introduce new characters and things. Do you think the Han Solo film might be our first like no imp story? Like the imps have nothing to do with it. The imps will be in it, but what do you mean no imp story? Because well, like the, episodes yeah. one and two technically are that way. Oh, uh, oh, that's oh yeah, they're right on that. <laughs> Sorry. So like, there's no Imperials in th those movies. I mean, there isn't three, but I mean that's true. I mean, the Han Solo film could be like Han Solo against Black Sun or Jabba's. Or yeah, I don't. Th I don't think the Imperials will be completely missing though. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there'll probably be a stormtrooper walking down somewhere. Well, no, I think oh, I think there'll probably be a ship. I, I think we very likely we will see his ship get boarded. Probably. And dump the spice. Uh, we'll probably see a, a character that I'm getting sick and tired of from the Jason Aaron run. Uh, that's the Han Solo's wife? Well, not wife. Yeah, that that person. Yeah, it's possible. We'll probably see her. Uh, maybe a young version of her. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm waiting for Ray Sloan to pop up. I want her in a movie. If he lives. Um, anyway. Well, even if she dies, you can still put her in a movie. Yeah, yeah. She'll, she'll appear in the Han Solo film. Han is dead, and he's he's got the film. That's true. I bet, I bet you will see her one day. You know it's it. actually going to be a time tra It's actually going to be, like, a time-traveling Han. Like, before he hits the ground in Episode Seven, he time-travels back into his old body, and it's like Quantum Leap or something. Oh. Okay. Um... Yeah, so... Oh, it's going to be a remake of Blade Runner. That's the Blade Runner sequel, is it's actually a Han prequel. Oh, gosh. Um... Uh, but, yeah, so... Next thing, uh... uh Han Solo and Hayden Christensen will not appear in Rock One. We already knew that. People are stupid for asking. They thought it was uh, Hayden Christensen in the suit. I don't know why. I guess that kind of makes sense, because he was in the suit in Episode 3, but no. We, we, that was uh, just more of a... From what I've heard that story, that was more just, you know, George saying, okay, you know, you've been waiting for this, so it's sort of like, we'll let you do it. I, yeah. don't, I, I don't expect... Like, I kind of find if you were going to put Hayden Christensen, you'd use Hayden Christensen, and I know... Some people wouldn't like that, but I feel like just to have him put me put in the suit, kind of like, you can get anybody to put me in that suit, as long as they're talking. And really? Well. Dude, David Prowse is like the best. I mean, he's not, Vader isn't just a guy walking down a hallway, and it's not just James Earl Jones. It, a lot of that is Prowse's just attitude and, well, you know, subtle gestures and stuff. I, I wonder how the, how the new guy will handle it, because. They're not. They're not even proud. He's too old. He's too Maybe old. he'll be like the robot chicken version. Maybe. 
Yeah. He'll just be this absolute goofball. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's just all of a sudden at the end of the film, he's going to cut Jin's head off. He's like, that was pretty wizard. Yeah, I would love that. Um, but no, I'm sure the new guy's going to be fine. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Joker is not Jason Todd. People are stupid. Uh, new Marvel intro oh. and fanfare. And I really like it. It looks, it looks nice. Looks de- decent. Um, I mean, it, the, the flipping pages is iconic, but I don't really care too much. I'll have to wait and see in theaters. Like I hope when I get the fanfare going, and then that's when I'll, that's when I'll finally judge it. Um, then we got uh, Spider-Man: Homecoming news. Uh, Vulture is confirmed as the villain. Yep, it looks pretty cool by this little poster. Yeah, I mean, we don't know if that's going to be the way a suit will look. But I really like it. Same. Um, but they haven't. Conf- but awesome. they haven't confirmed it's Michael Keaton, right? That was he wasn't fully right. Uh, we we don't know. They keep going back and forth on it. We got uh, more homecoming news. Uh, trying to find it. We we have Flash Thompson cast, uh, as well as several other characters. Right. Uh, yeah, Tony. Rev- so Lori was confirmed to be Flash Thompson. Uh, Laura Perrier is confirmed to be Liz Allen. Uh, Jacob Batsa Blonde is confirmed to be Ned Leeds. Uh, Zendaya's, Zendaya's role is not confirmed yet, but her name is Michelle, so we're guessing she's Michelle Gonzalez, who is a character who I'm not really that familiar with. Though I know she was referenced in the Netflix. So, oh, that's that would be a problem if she's supposed if she's showing guns on because she got referenced as another private eye <laughs> Ooh. in Jessica Jones. It's like, I don't think a teenager's a private eye. No, unless it's like one of those wacky adventures kind of thing. I actually heard something funny from uh, Kevin Feige that they want to take a Harry Potter approach for Spider-Man. I'm like, what, is, is he going to go to wizard school? <laughs> he gonna... No, the, 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 the cast will grow up. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, like how the Harry Potter cast grew up, so you grew up watching them as you grew up. That was the entire point. That's gonna, Oh, that'd be cool. Uh, that'd be cool then. That'd that's be... what I immediately assumed it was, with the fact that how big this cast is. Uh, and then be... you're going to get characters like Seamus and, St- and Dean, who just don't <laughs> matter at all, and it's just in the background the whole time, and you feel really bad for those actors, because they'll be forever remember- remembered as, hey, guy who played Seamus and got two lines. And don't forget the guy who was going to play Colin Creevy, but then he got kind of recast into the new character. He's kind of like Oh, yeah, when they, like, retconned Colin out of existence for, like, Nigel or whatever yeah, his name yeah, yeah, is. Yeah, that kid. I felt so bad, especially because Colin Creevy's actually, like, he gets a really sad end in the, in the books, which yeah. you don't see, and it's, like, a really heartbreaking thing. It's, like, completely removed. Oh, yeah, I remember Just that. for this stupid kid. It's like, damn it, why then, did they do that? And then the fifth one, they'll bring in a new character. Especially because the kid who played Colin was actually really awesome. And it looked just like the guy who played Nigel. Oh, Nigel, right. Well, the, Nigel was, like, younger than him, weirdly. Yeah, like, What's annoying is there was another, like, younger kid who could have been Nigel from uh, the fifth book, who they could have just, instead of making a character named Nigel, they could have just have been that kid who, like, looks up to Harry and then, like, is all, like, <gasps> Harry Potter's a bad person. Yeah, Harry yeah, feels yeah, all bad. Yeah, I remember, I that, um, oh, I forgot, but he was in the Harry Potter 2 deleted scene. They put that character in. No, 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 I'm not talking about, uh, I'm not talking about that guy, uh, oh. Ernie. I'm not talking about Ernie. I'm talking about, uh, that, 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 like, first year in book five. Oh. Well, I... in book four or whatever. No, no, it is book five because that's the first time. No, it is book four because that's the first time that Harry and Hermione actually make it to the ceremonies. <laughs> except, no, except for the first year. I remember that because it's, it's Harry's fourth year and he's like, wait, they, the, 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 the sorting hat changes its, its song and they're like, yeah. Wait, you've missed the last three like sorting ceremonies. He's like, "Oh yeah, I have." Oh uh, yeah. Um, I remember Colin's little brother Dennis. That... Oh yeah, Dennis. Again, it should have just been Dennis. Oh, man, we need to do commentaries on the Harry Potter films because those have some weird ass casting changes oh, yeah. <laughs> over the years. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be cool. Good to see a cohesive Spider-Man cast. Little team, yeah. his own little team. Yeah, maybe Flash Thompson will like. Become an uh, eight year old halfway through the thing. Oh boy. Uh, and then we have news that Katie Cassidy is confirmed, has struck a deal to be on all the CW shows. Why do they hate us? I wish mean, Cole was here because then he could just bitch about this. Uh, just. 
Why? 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 Like, dude, we already had enough of this just horrible person. We don't need more. Somebody on the writing staff must really like the Jack character. Just have some issue, man. I want to learn their psychology. I want to learn the people running the show psychology. I want to understand them. Get to know them. And then slowly dwell in the madness myself. That would be interesting. Uh, um, let's see. Also in other news, back to Marvel. Thor, Black Panther, Guardians, and Doctor Strange logos have all popped up. Yep. Thor, uh, Thor looks like a the Mario Kart. Thor's looks like a 90s video game, as so many people have pointed out. <laughs> oh, it looks kind of weird. Uh, but yeah, uh, the Black Panther one looks amazing. Just perfect, like, everything for that film. Uh, we already knew the Guardians one, but yeah, I really like this. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, we also got a Doctor Strange poster, which is really, really awesome looking. Like, I want that poster so bad. Um, can't wait to see. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, else? uh we've got Brie Larson confirmed as Captain Marvel. Woo! I've never seen her in anything. I don't think I have. Anything. Nor have I, but eh, we're, get, we're getting uh, Carol Danvers finally, so that's, you know, good enough for me. Uh. Yep. So, yeah. Uh. I mean, this was, this was rumored for a while, and everyone wanted this casting choice, so that's nice that they're doing that, and, you know, I, I really wonder if now that they've cast her, since that film got pushed back a little bit, will she probably show up in another Marvel film beforehand? It's possible. I mean, they, they've known to do that several times, Black Widow, uh, though she didn't get her own movie, sadly. Uh, well, in, in Black Widow's situation, though, she was intended... So, like, they knew they were going to use the character, but they, they cast specifically. Like, like, it was for Iron Man 2, in a way. Nice too. Like, she was only in that film to set up Avengers, but it wasn't like she was cast for Avengers, and they decided to put her in Iron Man 2. Ah, uh, okay. This is a different situation, where they cast her before... Like, they've cast the character, but we don't think... She, we don't have any confirmation of her being in a film before Infinity War. Right. So, it might be a situation where, like, you know, it, it, it kind of like how... Uh, yeah, you know, we created, like, Snap for Episode 7, and then they threw him in books before that film came out. Oh, that's Same right. Same with Jess. That right. kind of thing. Okay. Oh, that'd be cool. I wouldn't mind that. Um, yeah. Uh. Uh, next is uh, Michael B. Jordan's uh, Black Panther role has been confirmed. Also, Lapita Nwong, but I don't know that character that she's playing. Uh, it's not like I couldn't find too much information on that. Uh, article, because the links are just insane right now. Uh, but yeah, I so... I problem with the links, too, and I was setting up a few docs earlier, so I know that feeling. Oh, shit. Okay, yeah, uh... But yeah, he's gonna be playing Killmonger, who is a villain of Black Panther. Ooh, cool. Uh, and... We have, uh, next, do you want to talk about the Doctor Strange tra trailer? Um, sure, um, it looks... Cool. Uh, I I'm not a big Doctor Strange fan, so I don't know much. But it looks very, you know, magical and everything looks like it's a weird art painting. Everything's turning upside down. Weird magics. Yeah. Do you really want them to use uh, actual magic instead of the it's science that seems like magic thing? Yeah, I just prefer straight up magic at this point. <laughs> I know it's so annoying that they keep doing the it's science. I think it's. Yeah, reminds me of Doctor Who. They try to do that. Although by that point, they just kind of just say magic. Um, yeah. Uh, with Doctor Who, it's weird because they, they, you know, the way science or magic is like work in that universe, it depends on the day of the week. That's true. Which is one of the reasons I have a lot of trouble getting into that stuff. Uh, I used to, but now I'm. I mean, I'm the person who complain, whose biggest complaint with Episode 7 is that hyperspace doesn't function correctly, so I'm not really the kind of person to judge. Yeah. Well, to be fair, Big Finish actually has the most consistent continuity of all things Doctor Who at the moment. What, only like one retcon for story? Actually, no, they're, they're pretty good at keeping things orderly. Like a few. Yeah, that's, that's orderly for Doctor Who. Yeah, pretty much. 
But yeah, so uh, Matt Mickelson's character looks like his eyes are like gravel or something. Uh, Night Nurse is trying to defibrillate somebody, uh, which apparently she's, she's probably going to be. I, I think we've been thinking for by now she is Night Nurse, which is nice. Uh, lots of like apparently Doctor Strange is using lots of techniques that are like from the comics. His costume looks amazing and is probably the best suit of the entire uh, MCU. Oh, yeah, it looks very comic accurate. That's why it's it it looks fantastic. It's amazing, uh, and just overall loving the, the the look of this film. And uh, there were, apparently they misspelled uh, some like uh, that that spell at the end that's written on a card or something. <laughs> but uh, I, I really like seeing like him you know training and stuff like that. Like it seems almost like it's Batman Begins Magic Edition, which is so cool. Batman Begins, Magic Edition, that needs to be a thing. And but, all the stuff with, like, alternate realities and things is, is, is very Doctor Strange, because he goes to parallel universe. Well, not even parallel universe, it's just, like, alternate, like, dimensions and stuff constantly. And, like, like apparently, from what we've heard, he, in order to fix his hands, has essentially, like, exhausted all of his wealth. And, and I really like that, they were having the character be humbled, not just by, oh, he goes to the ancient... It's not just, like, with Tony's... Because the problem is... Uh, Iron Man essentially, like, the Iron Man film essentially just stole Doctor Strange's origin story. Because mm. for those who don't know, in, uh, the comics, Tony Stark isn't really, like, some jerk who has to be taught a lesson. That, that's not really his, what his story's about. He's just a decent guy who's, you know, who gets hurt and, you know, decides to be even better than that. Uh, you know directly help people and sort of thing. Like he, he's not like a bad person who has to learn a lesson. Uh, Dr. Strange is that person. So here they're kind of doing something where he, his humbling kind of is slow and gradual. That's interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Anyway, also somebody's like collapsing dimensions and stuff. It looks so cool. Just this, this is going to be a, such a great film to watch on the big screen. Oh yeah. I mean, look at all, look at the way everything just moving around. It's very bendy. Yeah. Uh, like you're looking into one of those weird tele- kaleidoscope things. Mm. Next uh, is the Star Trek Discovery teaser. It's cool. Uh, not much to say on it, just the ship. Yeah, uh, I I'm really really excited for this uh, series just because we yeah, we haven't had a Trek uh, you know Prime continuity thing in a while. We haven't. Uh, yeah, we haven't heard like really true Star Trek. And apparently, Star Trek Beyond resembles original Star, uh, you know, Star Trek a lot more. Which it's nice to have a show with a consistent crew. And uh, like this ship seems like it's before the uh, TOS Enterprise, meaning it's between Enterprise and TOS. Uh, that's exciting. Uh, it seems like the Discovery will be like uh, potentially. Fighting in like the, I think it's the the Earth Romulus War or maybe some Klingon conflict, and that that's really exciting. Nice. I'm not much of a Trek person, but I'm excited. Seems like it's gonna be cool. I uh, see some Star Trek back. Uh, got Michael Myler, My, Mike Myers. Mm, and cool. the ship just looks amazing. Uh, mm-hmm. But I mean, the effects don't look too finished. They look a little shiny, but that will probably be fixed in post. Uh, next, we got the Legion trailer. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, wrong. Uh, which... What is Legion, by the way? Like, what is uh, it? It's like an X-Men spinoff. I th- think it's about Charles Xavier's son. I don't know. Because I know nothing about Legion. Yeah, my, 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 my links are now acting so funky here. Yep, so mine. Uh, but... Uh, it, 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 it's, I don't have, I have no idea what's going on at, at all, really. Wait, uh, who, is Marvel making this? Marvel is producing it. It's a, it's in, like, a mixed continuity between Marvel and Fox, so they can't use the okay. Fox actors and everything, but it's still technically an X-Men universe. Interesting. I always thought TV rights were having, were, you know, a bit iffy. Like, that's one of the big things where how we, they might get Fantastic Four back. They get the TV rights, and Marvel gets Fantastic Four. Yeah, he he, he is uh, Xavier's son. That's that's pretty much all I know. Uh, 
Interesting. And he, he, he like warp reality apparently. That that's that's all I know. Uh but yeah, it it seems decent. I might watch potential like the first episode or so. But yeah, uh, I don't think there's not much to say because again, they're they're going with like the safest routes because you don't have to do much effects for this. No, it's hard to make it's hard to make any superhero thing on TV unless you're like Daredevil or Jessica Jones, very grounded. Mm-hmm. Uh, next is Legends of Tomorrow's teaser and you know all the news with that. <sighs> yeah, so we have a teaser for season two of Legends of Tomorrow. I hate the fact that this show is still on. Uh, so since, I guess, the Time Masters died last season, the... Did yeah, they die in the Great Time War? <laughs> in the Great Time War. So, like, the, the, the Legion, or whatever the fuck we're supposed to call them, uh, are, like... Like, so, I guess the idea is that the Legion is now the Time Masters, and, like, they have to take control of time and they're fighting like Damien Dark in the past and Sarah's trying to kill him because he killed Laurel which is probably gonna but oh you know what's gonna fucking happen she's gonna kill Damien Dark and then like part of season three of Arrow is gonna be slightly really uh, like messed with or something or she's gonna save Laurel and that's how Laurel's gonna make it in the other shows god damn it you see how pointless her death was just fuck Arrow fuck CW uh but, yeah, the effects look slightly better, and by slightly better, I mean they don't make me want to throw up too much. Time travel. Uh, uh, and more shitty-ass comedy. More, look at how important we are. It's like the Justice League. It's like, <laughs> you guys not the Justice League. Like, they're, they're not the fucking Justice League. Stop trying to make the Legends of Tomorrow happen. Because it, 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 they just won't. Nobody likes them. I mean, the, the, the show is just so wacky and insane. And not in like the really fun Gotham way type of wacky and insane. Where it's balls to the wall and badness and you can't help but love it for that reason. I really wish I would watch like, season 2 of Gotham because of that now. I kind of regret that decision. It's just This is just like dumb. Like there's no the, you you can't even do the like is Gotham satire or not like Gotham is like looking in the mind of a madman who is potentially sane which makes it all the more terrifying but all the more pa- fascinating mm-hmm. uh like you could do a comprehensive analysis of of madness just based on that show and the legends it's just like it's dumb schlock and that's all it is and all it will ever be and like it keeps trying to bring in DC elements and that, that's one with all the CW stuff is it's just pointless fan service they're like look it's the Justice Society and then every single dumbass who's only other read the New 52 stuff and that stuff's not bad but it's not really the Justice Society it's built on the idea of this is you know a new universe and everything so people so it's trying to pander to fans who don't really get these characters there's and you know it, it, it's a thing I keep putting up with like Detective Comics where it's like it's pandering to people who don't, like, the only people who are going to be excited are the people who don't know what these characters are like. They're like, whoa, there's this, the Justice Society. It's like, do you know who the Justice Society is? Well, no, but I've heard of them. It's the same thing with, like, whoa, they're, you know, they're bringing back Cassandra Kane. That's exciting. Do you know who that is? I read a Wikipedia article. Yeah, then you don't know who that is. It's like, I don't know. It's just, it feels so superficial. It's like, look, it's this very important, you know, team in the DC universe, but they don't seem to like, I'm so worried. Like, I want to be with Duke on the hashtag fuck yeah JSA, but I can't. I just can't bring myself. It's just... Uh, and, you do realize, and, you, and you do realize that they don't fix it, that eventually the people who do get it are going to just die out anyway. And the new people are just going to take over. Uh, this is... They, they need to bring the JSA into the uh, new DC EU because yeah, the CWU is just shit. And I'm so worried about this, especially because we have confirmation now that they're using more Legends of... Uh, they're more, using more JSA characters. They're using Stargirl, Obsidian, uh, C- Commander Steel was already confirmed in fixing. But they're using Obsidian, Stargirl, and Dr. Midnight. And I've been begging for years to see... Uh, well, Stargirl was in uh, Smallville and was actually done pretty well. Uh, but Dr. Midnight... Damn it, I love Dr. Midnight. And they're just going to ruin him. 
he, he it's just I wouldn't be surprised if the, if the only reason they're using him is because he's blind, so they think they can rip off Daredevil. Probably. I... It's like, damn it. I mean, if they do like something like really interesting with the fact that he's the first, uh, not just blind superhero, but Dr. Matt is actually the first handicapped superhero, Ooh. period. That's yeah, cool. I like, that, that'd be cool, but I, I don't think they'd do anything interesting with that. Uh, and... Just, I mean, like the blackout bombs. Like he's such a cool character, and he has like a pet owl uh, that helps him fight crime, and like he's so awesome. And they're just gonna screw it up. And then I don't get, and this is confusing because if this is set in the past, or if this is like, it's weird because Rex Tyler is young in in the in the Legends of Tomorrow season one finale. So Rex Tyler is is young, and it's implied that they're from a different universe. But why is Rex Tyler young, yet Courtney is is, is around? Because if Rex Tyler is in his 30s, Courtney won't be born for like 30 more years because her and Obsidian are both the children of JSA characters. Like, because Rex Tyler is the original Hour Man. So you could assume, oh, they're either doing the classic thing, which is the Justice Society is from a different Earth. Uh, it's, it's from Earth 2 uh, or some other Earth. And they are... Like heroes who fought during the '40s, they're the Golden Age heroes, and they they found the '40s and they 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 aged. Or you could do the New Fifty Two thing, which I think they're going to do, of all the Justice Society characters, like that, like they're you know they are, uh, like they showed up in like the the, the modern day, and so like, you know, you have the original, like you have like the original you know, Green Lantern and you know uh, like Alan Scott and Jay Garrick as the original Flash stuff like that. So there's they're the Golden Age counterparts, but they still show up in the modern day. They're still young, like in their twenties, in like two thousands. But what's weird about that is how the fuck are you gonna get characters like Courtney when Starkle doesn't actually sh- is the child of, uh, I forget. I think she's the child of uh, oh no, she she has like the the belt of uh, Star Spangled Banner kid, uh, who'd be like in his who who, who was dead at this point in the comics. And is the stepdaughter of the original Starman. Like how, how's, how the fuck is that supposed to work? You can't have it be both ways. That's the thing. They're, they keep trying to do the stupid thing of, oh, they need to be young and attractive, but we also want to do the legacy characters. They need to realize you can't do every single character as a supermodel with the Justice Society and still want to do the legacy stuff because the entire fucking point of the Justice Society or the reason people like them is that they're older, is that the majority of that team is older. And so why would you make Rex Tyler young? And plus, you have the easiest out possible. You want a young-looking hour man, and you still want to use the older – or you still want to use the Justice Society characters who are younger? Then freaking make him Rick Tyler, Rex's son, who took up the mantle of hour man when Rex died. Well, actually, there was a android who was a time traveler who took up the hour man legacy who might or may or may not have been like Rex Tyler because he had the DNA of Rex Tyler in his brain, but it's a robot brain. It's confusing. Yeah, it sounds confusing. He just kind of disappears after a while. <laughs> Apparently, he, the like 12-issue book he's in is actually like one of the best things DC put out in the 2000s, but still, it's messed up. It's just – it's like they don't have any idea what they want to do with the Justice Society. It's just like people have heard of them. Let's use them, but they have no actual respect or understanding of how that works, and it's just – I love the Justice Society so much, and they're just going to fuck it up, and I hate them for it, and it's just – it's not CW. fun. Boycott CW. That's all I can say. <laughs> I hate C- I hate this. I used to be so excited for the CWU, and now it's just it's shit. Because again, it's the New Fifty Two superficial. Look, we're DC. No, you're just a bunch of dumbass, you know, freaking teenagers wearing classic superhero costumes. Uh, you are nothing, DC. It sucks. His rebirth is like moving past this. Rebirth is being good. Uh. And same same with like like the DC movies seem to be moving in a better direction now, and the CWU is just still absolute fucking shit. It's funny and you bring that's... that up because sort of like what you talk about with Star Wars, how they kind of do it. But I feel like even Star Wars has a little more respect in some areas. Is this wrong? It's like a mixed bag. You know they use old stuff and then they bring in new stuff and then they kind of just yeah, and they don't understand why people actually like the old stuff initially. I don't know. I think they do a better job at it though. I don't think they have a bad problem. I don't think they have a bad 
uh, but that's because they're too they're they're absolutely terrified and so they don't do anything uh but in this case it's it's just it's so superficial and so cheap and it's for just these superficial fans and who don't actually give a fuck and just boycott it's, cw gotta boycott them cut off their funds no i want to rip them to shreds well, gotta, uh, well that's how you rip them to shreds first you gotta take away their dollars uh how is one viewer supposed to do that well, I don't know, but every view counts. I mean, <laughs> every view counts. <laughs> or every non-view counts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, or, yeah that's going to that's gonna work. Uh, but yeah, so we're getting the Legion of Tomorrow... Uh, uh, Le uh, ah, Legion of Doom. Legion of Tomorrow. <laughs> we're getting the Legion of Doom. Meanwhile, at the Legion of Doom. Uh, so thank you for fucking that up, CW. Uh, hopefully you can also. Oh, I was just gonna make a joke, but they actually DC already did this already, which is have the super uh, have the like uh, Wonder Twins get eaten alive by the the super dog. <laughs> oh, what uh, the Wonder Dog, whatever. Then again, DC did just have Crypto get cannibalistically eaten. Ooh, that poor Crypto. I used to watch the cartoon Crypto the Super Dog. So weird. They had a cartoon on Cartoon Network. It was so weird. They had like the bat dog. Like Luther had a cat. Ace. What? Ace. Yeah, Ace. Um, it was a cartoon. Was, Str was Streak uh, there? Flash's cat? Uh, no, I don't remember the cat. I remember Lex Luthor having a... I want to say it was a salamander, but I don't remember. Lux was supposed to have a polar bear, a pet polar bear in a, uh, in a old Superman in a Superman movie. It was so weird a show. It was like, it was this cartoony thing. Uh, was, here we like go. Like a cartoon? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. This, this was it. Yeah, I, I know. I know what uh, Crypto the Super Dog is. Uh, but know. yeah. So DC is vulgar and stupid right now. Uh, let's move on to uh Arrow season five trailer so I can make myself more depressed. Uh so Arrow season five. Somebody's watching it apparently. It um, Okay, so all these like training mad dog or whatever his name is and Like, uh, Artemis and, uh, somebody else who I keep forgetting. Uh, oh, yeah, he's training Curtis because, you know, a character who's, you know, supposed to be all tough and every, or a character who's supposed to be, like, the greatest genius on Earth, who's like a self-made kind of superhero, oh, has to be trained by somebody else. That's just great. Because uh, everyone has to be trained by Ollie in this universe because he's supposed to be the Batman character, even though Bruce didn't train every fucking character. And so now Mr. Terrific has to be lessened and just be another sidekick to Oliver because everyone has to fucking revolve around this asshat who can't even manage his own city without destroying it every other year. But no, they, you know, they all have to bow down to, you know, this jackass. Very damn hoodie. The dairy definition of a Gary Stu. I you know, actually, I've read fan fiction. This is pretty much he, how it works. He's just... Well, I've read uh, Jedi Academy. And that, too. <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, Kip. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, just all these training younger heroes because they want to rip off Justice League, Inc. Again, they're trying to do their own version of Mr. Terrific, a.k.a. fuck over all the JSA fans yet again because he didn't do that already last season. Uh... Even though they had the perfect out because they mentioned that he had a brother who was quote unquote dead, they could have just had Mike come out this way. But no, they have to have Kurt. Uh, all these training in like a fight club with Antoliov, uh, who's KG Beast, and he was in the previous season because they're still doing these things. Uh, I like the idea of giving Ollie a new team arrow, but I don't mean give him 16 different superheroes because the problem was Ollie became less interesting when he had 50 other heroes and Ollie stopped being the focus and stopped having flaws and stuff like that. Also, Ragdoll, oh, sorry, Ragman is confirmed. 
I thought they were moving, they said they were moving away from magic. Guess they weren't. Uh, also, we have another Dark Archer character who is Prometheus. He's not. He's technically you know, he's he's just another Archer who happens to be called Prometheus. He has no connection to the Batman villain. And fuck you, CW. He's just a ripoff of the anti-Batman Prometheus. Let's get your own characters. Also, Ragman is a character who's connected to Batman. Uh, and again, is a magic-based character. And I don't get why you're using Ragman. Also, he's apparently like the first Ragman or something, which is annoying because Ragman's supposed to be a legacy thing. Uh, if I'm correct, I forget Ragman's backstory. Uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on the uh, trailer? Man, I don't know. It's Arrow. I I don't even. I haven't even finished season one, so I haven't felt the pain yet. But ugh, just by the way you're describing it, they're making uh, Ollie Gary Stu man, Mister Perfect. And like again, what it is uh. Ratman is like a mystical based superhero who, you know, is derived from the Golem of Prague in, in Jewish folklore. Like he's primarily like uh, the like the, the patches in his suit are made from the so, uh, the souls of evildoers that he has punished and absorbed. Like that's that's not gonna really fit that well with this. Just what? What I say? You think? No, I'm saying what? Like why? Why are they doing this? It's just oh, uh, stop using villains who don't have any point in a fucking Arrow show, or a Batman villains. Just they keep running out of ideas. They keep proving that they're just a bunch of dumbasses who have no talent whatsoever. But yeah, so we got the uh, we've got the uh, Flash trailer, which. So Ollie's, or sorry, not Ollie, uh, Barry's in the Flashpoint universe after having destroyed his timeline and essentially killed, like, everyone in his universe, uh, if his universe is destroyed now, when you really think about it. Uh, Cisco is, like, a billionaire because they hate Duke. I feel so bad for him. Uh, And so Barry's, like, all pissy and stuff. He's like, but this is my universe, and I'm all happy because my your mom's still alive, and, you know, being so... I, like, I get that they're calling him out on being selfish, but I just don't feel like... It, it's, it, it doesn't matter if you're calling him out on it. You're still doing such a great disservice to the character by having him do that in the first place. Like, they, they went too far by having this happen at all. Uh, but, yeah, so we also have... Uh, he has Eobard Thawne look, Thon look uh, like tied up, and that's cool. At least that you know Thawne is just like, yo, who's the villain, Flash? Who's the villain? Uh, also, Doctor mm-hmm. Alchemy seems to be showing up. Who's Doctor Alchemy? Uh, he's a classic uh, Flash villain who I think also has connections to. No, yeah, he's mainly a Flash villain. But yeah, it's nice to see Reverse Flash again, like the classic Reverse Flash. I guess he'll be alive in this new timeline. Uh, and I'm guessing when we go back to the old timeline, things will be changed. But can we just please stop doing time travel and stuff and, st- and get away from Flashpoint and stop? Like, they repeat the very thing that people hated about Flashpoint, that being that Barry Allen is a selfish asshole. And once again, he's a selfish asshole. It doesn't matter if you call him out on it, he's still a selfish asshole, and you shouldn't throw characters under the bus like that. It's just stupid, and I fucking hate it, and I hate them. Keep, and, yeah. Keep telling you, boycott CW when you kick off their money. Then they'll start listening. How am I going to cut off their money? I might as well at least complain about it. Well, like, tell your friends. Rally the masses. Yes, by being angry and watching it and bitching about it. But aren't you just making the money which feeds the beast that keeps the cycle going? Yes, because a few more dollars is really going to change things. You never know. I prefer to think in the positive light. But anyway. You me. being positive. In that case, yes. Um, no, but, you're the one who keeps watching Moffat. Well, yes, but I know Moffat's going to lead Doctor Who next season, so I'm happy. Did you still feed him? What if he's like, oh, I'm going to make a Doctor Who spinoff that I'll be in charge of about Davros. If he does that, then he's my new hero, because I would totally watch it. No, Moffat's doing a Davros story where we find out, yeah. like, it's going to be like Palpatine. He's just a heartbroken little puppy. Well, actually, they did do a background of uh, a backgrounds of big finishing on Davros from his childhood up to his accident. Oh God, this is why I love Sheev. He's just an asshat. No, they make Davros a psychopath too. Oh, nice. Yeah. He, did he oh, like kill his parents? 
nobody studied on his parents. Well, he studied on his mother, who was a complete psycho. Um, he, he, after his mother killed his sister, and then he studied on her to get the whole Dalek project going. He, he, uh, he did have a love interest who he betrayed because he feared that he, he would overshine him. Um, so yeah, he's just a psychopath too. So, kind of like Mal Malgus? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like just killing, uh, what's her face, the imp the Imperial agent. Yeah, like, Idavros. Yeah. It's called Idavros. It's actually pretty good. Idavros, oh god. Uh. Yeah, it's actually, it's actually really good. Uh, people would think so. But yeah, so, uh, I guess we'll move on to the Wonder Woman trailer. Wonder Woman. Well, we already did the one to him. Oh, was that last one? No, we didn't. Oh, right, that was last We didn't do any of the trailers. Oh, that's right, we didn't. We only did the first day of Comic-Con. Oh, that's right, we, we skipped on that. Um, I forgot, we just talked about it. Um, yeah, um, this was interesting. It's a lot colorful. I like the colors. Mm. Uh, I mean, there's certain moments where it looks like it's under, like, a weird hue, but still, I... I really liking this because world war one was an absolute like hell and it's awesome to see them use that and just it's so cool like you know she's using the lasso and it's still glowing like it wasn't vvs uh there's a lot more like varied locations by the looks of things the mascara looks interesting the costume design looks fantastic on everything uh it seems like steve trevor trevor was a uh was undercover as like a Nazi pilot, which is inter or not Nazi, uh, German pilot, which is cool. World War One. Nice to see World War One. Yeah, uh, you know, got stuff in the trenches. Got one woman just being a badass. I'm still not okay with her using a sword and shield, but whatever. Uh, uh just overall, really excited for this. Uh, we got her seemingly attempting to assassinate uh, some general guy. Best guess is that that person is uh, a uh, what you call it uh, is Ares or someone in disguise. Uh, Steve's trying to stop her from killing him. Uh, and oh, I'm trying to think what was the uh, other thing. Oh yeah, we have like some woman with like a jigsaw mask thing on who might be like a mid magical character or might be like an Amazon or something who knows but probably a villain uh it's we don't have any confirmation of a, have a magical villain yet which is funny since Suicide Squad has now finally co confirmed that it has a magical villain who we finally saw in the most recent trailer which we won't cover because we don't want to watch much more Suicide Squad stuff no too, uh, getting too close getting too close but yeah uh the humor comes off a little too much sometimes Oh, I don't like the joke at the end. Uh, but we know we're getting... Uh, uh, we, we know we're, that the Wonder Woman's backstory is going to be the Zeus created her out of clay thing, which is good. <laughs> Zeus, Zeus, Wonder Woman. Ah, oh, dang it. I can't, I can't do the jail, 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 I made out of clay song with, with Wonder Woman. Ah, uh, uh, but that's cool. But yeah. Dude, uh, you missed your chance when I was talking about uh, Jewish superheroes. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> Uh, is there any Kitty Pride news? Uh, um, no. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So sorry. Um, but yeah. Uh, again, loving the suit, loving the fact that the lasso is still bright. Don't get how nobody catches the fact that there's a giant sword down <laughs> down the back, but whatever. Uh, I wouldn't notice. I would have noticed that. <laughs> uh. But yeah, she's like breaking a gun behind her back, which looks awesome. Uh, and again, like just all the fighting here looks fantastic. Uh, Hopefully, I can see. And it. we're pretty much getting like the, her version of the Batman scene from BBS when he like takes down all those guys in that building. Yeah, hopefully there's more of that than there was in the movie. Somebody's kind of annoying that's all slow mo. Since what was good with the uh, Batman scene was it was just him fighting people. That was a pretty good scene. Yeah, except for the whole casual murder. Yeah. It's like, oh, shit. And just how violent that is when you watch it on slow-mo, where you see people's, like, heads, like, spurt out blood when they get hit with stuff. It's like, yeah, what the fuck? Uh, but yeah, the one one trailer looks awesome. Really excited for this film. I think it will be legitimately good. I hope so. Um, somebody keeps telling me Snyder was involved writing it, but I, I don't know. No. Okay, that's not true. Okay, good. 
Uh, so we got confirmation that Justice League Dark is getting a film, and we had a little behind-the-scenes thing with some clips. Uh, that's awesome. Oh, the DC animated film for it. Uh, John Costin is going to be played by Matt Ryan again. That is awesome. Yeah. Uh, we also have the Teen Titans Judas Contract will be a film. Also, Batman and Harley uh, Batman and Harley Quinn will be a film. So we're uh, by Bruce Tim, and it's going to be about the st- probably be about the stupid ass current Harley Quinn stuff, which sucks. I don't get why we keep giving Bruce Tim these projects. I don't think he's as good as everyone. I don't think he's as good anymore. Also, I pray to God it's not just Kevin Conroy again. Uh, Justice League Dark looks awesome, uh, or at least interesting at the very least. We got like Etrigan and everything. Uh, we're finally doing more magic stuff. Uh, the Teen Titans are Judas contract thing is annoying because, because that story is the cum- cum- accumulation of a lot of events that were happening in the Titans book at that time. I you know, it, 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 it'd I, be like uh, it'd be like doing episode six without four and five. <laughs> like, you, you can't. Well, I think episode six already isn't a good enough accumulation of the events of those previous films. Uh, but yeah. Uh, we got. Uh, I only know image, a little bit about the uh, Jewish contract. I think a little bit. Uh, we got an image of Harley Quinn's Jester suit oh, yeah, in, the, in Suicide Squad. That looks awesome. Looks nice. Nice to know that that was actually part of continuity in this new stuff. Uh, Jeff Johns named president of DC Entertainment. I agree with Steve. He's climbing up too fast. I don't even think it affects anything. So, like, here you go. It does. Oh, well, I don't He's know. He's the president of the company, dude. Yeah, but it's not going to affect the current movies until, like, Justice League. Or at least not Well, yeah, to- it is, because he has technical edit. It, yeah, not the movies that are coming out this year, yeah, but he still has, like, editorial, you know, oversight. Do uh, Jeff Johns is even the bright person? I would give it to somebody else. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I like Jeff Johns sometimes. Sometimes not so much. Uh, I feel like it's just too fast. Uh, but moving on, we have uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them images. Oh, yeah. That's all it too. It looks cute. We got a phoenix-looking thing, or a griffin, whatever the heck it is. Uh, Let's see what we got. Look at them again. Okay, we got... These links today are these things. There we go. Let's we've see, got, we, like, uh, a... Hippogriff. A, a snake look. Oh, yeah, hippogriff. I'm an idiot. Uh, a uh, we got, like, an owl-looking thing? We got a goblin, and we got a house elf. It looks like, a. Uh... A series is House Elf, whose name is Grip Hook. No. No, dude, Grip Hook is the, uh, the, the term, you're thinking about Creature. Creature, that's right. Uh, but yeah, uh, looks cool, the effects look decent. Yeah. Gonna be curious, see what this looks like. Uh, mm-hmm. we uh, got, uh, do you have anything to add on that? Nope, I'm just curious. Yeah. Yeah, we got uh, more figures uh, shown. So we have two Doctor Strange figures, I think, like an Iron Fist figure. I don't know which line this is for. Uh, but, like, we have the conflict Doctor Strange, then we have the movie Doctor Strange. We have Baron Mordo from this upcoming film. We got some more Marvel things, like uh, we have Billy Braddock, Spider-Man. We have uh, the Black Suit, Spider-Man, uh Goblin, apparently, oh, Jackal, oh, God, why would you make a Jackal figure? Uh, we got Miss Marvel and, uh, the new, uh, what's his, what's his face? Uh, 2000, uh, the new 2099 suit, which is decent. I don't like it too much, though. Uh, then we got some more Marvel figures of characters that I don't know, who are Guardians of the Galaxy characters. Uh, oh, we got some comic two-packs, that's nice. Uh, we got some X-Men figures, uh, uh, from the 90s era, Cyclops, Polaris, Sunfire, Colossus, and Dazzler, uh, then we got the new Iron Man suits, which I absolutely love, and I'm so glad we're gonna figure of that, uh, and sadly these are just, like, uh, four-inch scale, so that's, that's unfortunate, because I would've liked larger ones, but then they have, uh, all new Wolverine, Lady Deadpool, Moon Knight, Spider Man UK once again, and uh, some character I don't recognize. Uh, we got a closer image of the Jin figure uh, from the San uh, the San Diego Comic Con exclusive, which is really sad. I'm pissed that that's just San Diego Comic Con exclusive. 
Uh, then we got Land the Black Series Lando, old Ben Kenobi, Qui Gon, uh, two red guard or a red guard figure that seems to been I think either an additional one or just that the red yeah I think it's just that the red guard has the Crimson Empire design underneath Ooh, and a Tusken Raider. Nice. Then we have the uh, hmm. smaller uh, three uh, three and three quarter inch figures for Thrawn, uh, that pilot that uh, Mandalorian guy, and we got Poe in his Resistance like standard garb like official garb Ooh, cool so more po figures for me to buy which i'm still behind by like three or four and they keep putting out more and then there's going to be like 15 for episode seven uh next we have uh the lego tfa uh which is weird i thought there pack. was stuff i always thought there were prequel things in the lego tfa yeah this is just a pack specifically for prequel characters oh okay that's cool uh, so we get. Uh, oh, even though Darth Maul is wearing his Clone Wars getup, I yeah. think. Then we have like burnt Anakin, which looks so cool. I thought that was Snoke for a few seconds before I realized. Oh wait, that's burnt Anakin. Never mind. I get just because it's all burnt. But yeah, that was cool. I uh, got Boba Jango fed. Uh, I saw. Sorry, I'm just rewatching the trailer again. Uh, I got like. Can't well, we got it. uh Captain Panaka. We got Jango. You got Watto. I think I saw. Z- I think yeah, we saw Wado. We have Padme from Episode One. I think uh, we have Jar Jar, which is just the ultimate like fuck you to fa- to defense. And I I hate Jar Jar just as much as everyone else, but I love seeing him used in places just as a a you want to like like kind of like I love it when uh like I think Charles Soule joked with this as well. Like it, it's fun to just joke about that, especially because so many people are like, oh no, if you do any prequel elements, it sucks. The prequel suck as Jar Jar, and like you always get. Like a lot of writers who are actually genuinely competent, be like, okay, you want you know, like you make fun of your fellow Star Wars fans. We will put Jar Jar in everything. Like that, that's the threat. <laughs> oh yeah, we are getting Zam, which is awesome. It's just like my binoculars thing. Oh yeah, because uh, maybe we'll actually get more of Zam in the new continuity. Oh yeah, it looks just like and Jango looks super shiny. Oh, super shiny. It's oh. awesome to see Jango fat. Uh, mm-hmm. And I really divide this game. Soon. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Uh, can't wait. Uh, I wonder if Ahsoka is going to be in there somewhere. Probably. Eventually. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Uh, uh, we got a first our first image of Superman from the Supergirl show. And then another one just recently yep. today, which actually looks which better. Is, yeah, a lot better. Uh, exactly. It looks a little younger than I would have expected, but the hair looks awesome. The suit looks just like the male version of the Supergirl suit we have in this show. Uh, just overall, really, really excited uh, to see how they handle Clark in this series. Uh, the guy looks just right for the role uh, of a younger Superman. I, don't, I didn't expect the Superman to be younger, but since he's going to be, might as well. And he, he, he does that role really decently. Lots of things. Uh, yeah, thoughts? I like it. I can't wait to see a different take on Superman. Since, you know, movies haven't been so good, and though I'm sure that's not Kevin's, uh, you know, Cavill's fault. I don't, I don't even blame him. Uh, yeah. Uh, Rogue One art book confirmed. It looks awesome. Ooh, Can't wait. Oh, yeah, I love art books. Uh, we have Sherlock Season 4 trailer. That looks cool, I guess. Yay. Yeah, they're, they're right. hyping up that, like, uh, Moriarty may or may not be back, which is still kind of the big debate. Uh, I bet it's a big letdown at the end. No one Moffat it only is. Also, Sherlock is not clean-shaven, which is weird to see. Uh, everyone seems angry at each other. Stuff. Yep, and finally, we have the Justice League official trailer. I liked it. It was I liked this trailer. It was cool. Um, I like Flash. I really like the Flash. I think that's probably the best part. Uh, Aquaman looks awesome. Uh, I still hope this isn't like the like look at how bad it's Aquaman. Like they're compensating. I hope it's just Aquaman being badass and interesting. Uh, I love Bruce messing with them. Like especially that Arthur Curry. So I hear you talk to Finn. Like, that moment, 
Like, some of this comedy I'm worried about. I think it's just that they took the funniest moments and just put them here. I, I really hope the film isn't like, look, we're funny. We can be funny because the problem with BVS wasn't that it was dark or that, what, that it wasn't funny. It was that it was just horrible and badly put together and badly paced and badly shot and badly sound edited and just shit. Uh, it looks more competent made. Comp- but then again, trailers are deceiving. Yeah, well, this isn't even a trailer. That's true. Hmm. Just footage uh, that they have shot already. Cyborg uh, looks got, pretty good, though. I, th- I don't like Cyborg's look. I like the face. I don't like the chest. Uh, we have like an image of like some what looks to be like almost Vikings or something burying one of the mother boxes. Uh, Aquaman throwing his beard out and getting like uh, consumed by water. It still looks a bit. Some areas looks a little too gray, though. I'm just not gonna lie. Yeah. So I'm I'm, gl- I'm kind of glad they're not like over brightening the film. Though I do love this. The the, the 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 best part is when Bruce is in Barry's. Then he's like Barry Allen. Like I forget what he says. He's just like like I'm putting a, uh, putting a team. Together. He's like I, I'm Bruce Wayne. You say that as if it makes it, as if it makes it okay that there's a complete stranger sitting in the dark in my in my second favorite chair. I love that moment because it's like yeah, what the hell, Bruce. <laughs> I love how Bruce just stands up and he's... He's the Nick Fury of this group. Exactly. And and I love how it, he's not... Like, Nick Fury is all, like, vast and calm and collected. Bruce is just kind of an asshole. <laughs> like, he, he... That's one thing that you will never lose when it comes to Bruce. He, he's kind of a dick. Yep. I hope like, he, that, that never goes away when it comes to Bruce. He's still kind of a fool himself. Like, he throws a batarang at a, at a freaking kid's head... Like, what if he wasn't the Flash? He would have just taken this poor kid's head off. I'm, like, he's a little insane. I'm curious how much uh, writing control Chris Terrio got for this film over Batman vs. Superman. I'm wondering how much of, like, Ben's scenes are, like, either improvised or Ben got to write the, the dialogue for them. Oh, I'm sure he probably is writing the dialogue. I'm sure he's... I'm sure a bunch of people now are having their shoulder over Zack Snyder. Which is not always a good thing. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's not. Depending. I wonder if, like, I don't like the idea of everyone on the team being all wacky and stuff like that and and everything. I hope they're not. But I do love the the fact that Bruce is, is doing the Brave and the Bold thing where he's the straight man to everyone else's jokes. Yeah. Like, he, he every time he's making a joke, it's always, like, again, Bruce being a jerk. Uh, or, like, sneaking up on people or throwing batterings in people's heads. Also... I, if I caught a batarang, I would want to keep it as well. Oh, no, of course. I'm not the biggest fan of... Like, Barry seems really socially awkward. A lot of people are pissed about that. I kind of like it because he's so different than the normal Barry, and the idea is supposed to be because he's so isolated when he goes through the uh, Speed Force. But, like, he has trouble relating to people, which I, I which I like, that he's always going ten times faster than everyone else. Gotta go. Yeah. He's just a total isolationist. I think he's... Uh, and I, I just love that moment. Yes. Really? And Bruce just is kind of like smile, like, wait, what? Hmm. Like, I love how, again, like, Bruce kind of, he feels like a completely different person than BVS, but he still feels like Ben Affleck, and he still feels like Bruce, but like, he's smiling, but he's not like, I'm goofy now, like, look, we're funny. Like, he still is Bruce Wayne. Just, Bruce Wayne makes jokes, like, you know, he, he does it in the Nolan trilogy. He does that in the comics constantly. Also, I love Barry. I need friends. And Bruce is, just looks at him like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> like realizing how terrifying this is. It's a bad idea. <laughs> also, I really like the new bat suit. I, I'm, I'm a bigger fan of the gray and black, but I kind of like the all black suit. That's it. Oh, it's, it is new? Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, look at the poster for it. It's, it, it's a different suit. Uh-huh. Uh, Barry's suit is weird. I know it's supposed to be made from, like, NASA tech. Uh, that he, like, meshed together. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know. I don't like the mesh suits. I just never do. But yeah, Cyborg does not look right. I hope that CG is fixed later. Uh, but it's not even the CG. It's just the design itself looks weird to me. Uh, but yeah, uh, just... <laughs> Bruce is just so awesome in this. Like, this movie could so... It, it feels very, very, very reactionary. But I'm still excited. Uh, again, because just Bruce feels like such a like well, such a jerk, and it's so it's maybe, so Bruce. Maybe this time the Batman stuff will be the best part of the movie. 
Yeah, probably. Ben Affleck. Uh, can't wait for that solo Batman film, though. Uh, yeah, and apparently it's gonna. It, it, the, the rumors are still that it's gonna be said in Arkham, which seems really awesome. Which can be really awesome if that's true. Yep. So I'm excited. Especially you get to see him like face off against all his villains all at the same time. Uh, Hopefully, it had the film have a coherent narrative. That'd be nice. Yep, and uh, I, 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 what, what were your thoughts on uh, everyone's designs that have been a little bit changed now? Uh, I, I for the most part like them. I mean, I don't know much about Aquaman. He seemed pretty cool. Um, Flash seems okay. I mean, I agree a little bit too mech, but you know, I'm used to more suit. But you know, um, Cyborg. I'm not really used to this Cyborg because I have my own Cyborg. I'm I'm, used to, I'm not I'm used to so you're right the chest does look a little too weird I like do like the face uh, Batman looks the best I think and uh, Wonder Woman's fine uh, again yeah, it's uh, a bit more but, colorful but I guess that's uh, it's funny that Superman is on the poster even though he's not in the movie or do you know, they have any patron oh, he's gonna be in the movie I mean he has, he's in the trailer also Cyborg's chest looks a little bit better in the uh, official poster as his Aquaman's armor and Flash's costume looks a lot better. Uh, it's just in motion. I don't know, maybe his, his face looks a little squished in the <laughs> mask in the actual trailer, I think is my problem. Right. Uh, but the Aquaman's what's... armor looks awesome. I'm curious how much of a role Superman will actually have in this movie. I'm pretty sure he's going to be, like, mind-controlled when he first shows back up. Oh, man. Uh, but yeah, do you see the tactical bat suit? Yeah, uh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, it's, like, modified, and apparently he's going to have some blue on his suit at some point in the movie. Also, he's going to have a different version of the mech suit that he had in BVS. Hmm. But yeah, the, the suits look a lot better in still images. I'm guessing that's just because they polished that stuff up a little bit more. Uh, and just from, this is all we have so far, but, you know, for a first impression, it's, it's good. I actually think this is probably a better first trailer than uh, Batman vs. Superman was. I always like that second trailer a lot more. Remember the first one with just the people going to Clark, you know, trying to hold the, the hand-holding kind of a thing with the statue? Yeah, well, I... Which, 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 what do you mean by first trailer? Do you mean the... The one uh, with the false god, the one that said false, the statue is... Yeah, that, yeah, I didn't like that. I didn't like <laughs> the, uh... I, I also didn't, I didn't even like the second trailer. Well, that's just the Comic-Con trailer, but I did, I, the one I liked the most was the first true trailer which was the uh I think that's the, the one that confirmed Jason Todd's costume. I think that's the one that was it. I think that's the one I was thinking. That's of. the second official trailer, third if you count the false god one. Okay, that's probably the one I was thinking of then. Yeah, that's it. That was the one. Uh that was the best one. And I think this in the this first trailer I think trumps those previous trailers at least for me. Mm. And to be honest, the next trailer will be more like actual story stuff, hopefully. <laughs> Right, right. Uh, so yeah, I mean, some hopeful maybe. I hope so. they're definitely gonna have a tight reign over Snyder. Probably he is not in the he's in the penalty box. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess another thing about this movie that I just realized is that even though it's very reactionary, I feel like this movie got off the ground easier than Batman vs Superman. I mean, I might be just thinking wrong here, but thinking incorrectly, but I feel like with Batman vs. Superman, that took so long to just get going. And yeah, Justice League is not coming out for a few years. Is it coming out next year, right? When's Justice? When is Justice League coming out? Next year, right? Uh oh, did I lose you? I think... No, my freaking... The, the, the phone goes black every five seconds. It's so annoying. Uh, oh, when, you, you... When, you, when you mute it. Uh, well, well, 2017, I'm thinking... Yes, I think it's 2017. Okay, so let me, let me, let me check something here, because I have a bit of a... a, bit of a consp I want to put on my conspiracy theory hat for a second. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, man, when, when did Man of Steel come out? That came out in 2013... Batman vs. Superman came out this year. Like, Batman vs. Superman took three years to get off the ground. 
And this one's taking a lot shorter of a time. And, you know, to be fair, it probably still has production problems, might have production problems, but I feel like this is having an easier production time than Batman vs. Superman did. I feel like it's not in development heck as much as, you know, Batman vs. Superman is. Would you agree with that or disagree? Uh, uh, it depends. I mean, BBS was put on hold for a year, but at the same time, this is kind of being rushed a little bit. That's true. So. And Snyder has been, like, removed of, like, seven different pieces of, like, power. Like, he's just been shoved down the totem pole a lot during the making of this film. Uh, it's hard to tell. For, for good or for bad, uh, probably. It's weird, because, you know, at the one hand, if you give Snyder complete control, it's probably not going to end up well. But if you don't, then, you know, I'm not against collaborative filmmaking. I'm just, you know, let's try to have some cohesiveness here. So it's one of those weird issues. I, l I love studying the, the, the industry and just how it all works. It mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm overall excited for this film. Uh, like I'm, I'm hesitant. I think this, this it might backfire, but you know, I, I want to wait and see. I want to believe that it's going to be good. It's it's DC, and every time I see it, like I, it's it's a DC thing. I get excited. I get giddy because it's these characters that I like, and it doesn't feel like it's just idiots wearing their costumes like any CW thing does. It it feels like it's legitimately these characters. Yeah, I think they're trying. Can't say they're not trying. Uh... Uh, but yeah. So, final thoughts? Um, I'm, you know, 50-50 could really be good. It might not, you know, with, I hopefully, you know, Ben Affleck's keep, sort of like the glue that's trying to keep hold this on together, you know. Um, it might not be what people really want, but it could be more competent. And then, you know, that's the next step. After Batman vs Superman, you gotta make the next step. Um, and hopefully, we'll regain some people's trust. Uh, we have to see for Suicide Squad. That's gonna be the real tester here. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that, that's my final thoughts on that issue. Yeah. So that's the news. That's the news. Till next oh wait, time. comics. Oh, oh right, comics. Um, right. Okay. Oh, so. Oh, oh, uh, for this week, we had. I have Detective issue 937 and Nightwing uh, number one for the new Rebirth book. Detective is yet again really like, look at how cool Batman is. Like, like it's it's so superficial. It's not bad, but it still feels a little incredibly superficial at points and just like I really want to like this book, but – Okay, it's just so – people like these characters, but it's it's so superficial. It's just so bare bones of these characters, and it, I don't think it fully gets why people like them and everything. And just – there's nothing really more to say than that. I, fi I finally – I'm off the book now. Oh, uh, but ask you. I was going to ask you like, if you can drop it. And, and it, what's, what's really weird is we got uh, – the a character that I did not expect to come back, and I'm kind of pissed because now they're fucking over uh, a creation, a really fun thing that uh, uh, Chuck Dixon did, which was Ulysses uh, Hadrian Armstrong, who was like this 14 year old or like you know, like 12 year old who was like this mad genius who like took over the gangs of Gotham and stole from a military base and tried to destroy the GCPD building with a tank. Yikes. And it's hilarious. It's like a satire of uh, pa parents in like the '90s, like you know, being like, "Oh well, we want to be our kids' friends instead of our pa their you know parents. Like we don't want to come off as mean." Uh, it's it's like the tick with uh, the uh, what's the name? like brain child or whatever his name is, like the the kid who's like yeah, all yeah. evil and insane, and the parents are like, "Oh, well, we didn't want to parent him." And it's like, like we're '90s parents. It's just making fun of like very liberal parenting. <laughs> And this, they like that's what that's what uh, the general is supposed to be. And here he's just like a mad genius. He's just supposed to be like the anti Red Robin. But the problem is Tim's grown up, so then they have this character grow up, and he's just supposed to be like a geek for Batman, which just doesn't work. 
because before he was like this mad genius, like 12 year old who was like using all these big words and speechifying all the time. And now he's just kind of like a teenager. He's like taking a selfie with Batman. And I'm like, fuck, this isn't like, again, it's like people like, you know, people like these characters. So let's just bring them in like without realizing why people actually like characters or why they actually work. Have you ever appeared in anything uh, animated? No, no, no. Ah, oh, I would. He's totally, obscure. Oh, I would totally use that character. He just sounds awesome. Uh, but like the entire idea is like, I, I think they're trying to do like there's like some badass Batman moments at the beginning, but again, it's so superficial. It's just oh, Batman's so cool. He has like a tooth that has like a gas pellet in it, and he escapes. Like, isn't that cool and stuff? And it's like it, it's not actually doing anything interesting with Batman. It's just he's cool. That's all Tinian has to say on the character. Just Batman is cool. Like, he's not doing anything interesting. He's not actually – Batman's not a character. He's so superficial. It's just Batman is badass instead of an, a, a, a person, and that's that's all it is. And it's really weird. So they have like a modified – like they have their own version of the Batcave, which is underground as well. Like this, this militia thing that kidnapped Batman. And they have like a giant stone – like world that has a statue that has a bat like over it and this giant American flag it's supposed to be like look at how evil America is and they're trying to pervert Batman it's like it's like he's trying to do social commentary but I don't know on what the fuck he's even trying to do it on and like it's about being part of a team or something and I think it's trying to rip off Incorporated and like it tries to have all these big like character moments of like look at this like climactic character moment and i'm like wait that was a character moment there was a arc there what it's just it's so bare bones that there's just nothing to any these characters are just stereotypes and it's so this standard it's infuriating because how can a book as great as tom kane's batman or tim Seeley's night nightwing exist when you have just dull crap that's just kind of the same old Batman thing that doesn't actually have any interesting content to it. But, yeah, moving on to uh, Nightwing number one. Uh, this wasn't as good as the Rebirth issue, but still, it's decent because it's setting up uh, like some weird uh, like witch person who has like a zombie whose zombie gets killed by uh, the the assassin who killed Lincoln March, uh, who seems to be part of the, I forget what they call them, but the, uh, uh, oh man, I keep, I keep forgetting what these people are called. The, uh, Parliament of Owls, yeah. Uh, and then, like, a Cobra agent tries to kill, uh, somebody at an opera, or no, at a circus thing, and then Dick takes him down, and, because Dick's working for the, uh, parliament of owls because they put a bomb in damien's head but he actually got the bomb out but now they're pretending like they have he's pretending like he hasn't so he can be a sleeper agent and it's kind of interesting that he he keeps being like no i mean you know, i i was i you know, had to go undercover and fake dick grayson's death you know but but now i'm dick grayson again and everyone's like you're still undercover technically you're still your night went again technically you're still doing stuff as dick grayson but you're still undercover. Like, you're not being yourself. You're not being a hero anymore. And I kind of like that idea. Uh, also, just a nice scene of, of Bruce and Damien actually hanging out in the Batcave. And everyone like, that's that's the kind of things I miss is people just handing around in the Batcave. Uh, it's a, you know, Bruce and Damien are fighting and Dick's, like, helping him out. And I love Bruce gets distracted and gets hit uh, by Damien. It's like, oh, man, that, like, Dick's going to get his ass handed him for that. Uh and again, Damien being just funny and awesome, and Dick doing his constant thing of like asking Bruce for advice constantly. Bruce being like, actually, just get like, like he's like, you know, make your own decisions for once. Uh, and then, uh, kind of Dick being told by like fellow agents to like, or by his uh person who he has to be partner with, to uh, who's the the assassin who killed Lincoln March, who we keep seeing. Uh, his name's Raptor. And he's supposed to be Dick's new partner uh, within the Parliament of Owls or whatever. And, like, Dick's all pissed about having to work with somebody, especially because this guy's, like, a cold-blooded killer and everything. Uh, and they they have a little fight. That's about it. It's just kind of like 
they're, they're still dealing with the idea of uh, Dick kind of holding himself back. Like, is he actually becoming Dick Grayson again, or is he just holding himself back and trying to hide behind? And it's like, that's interesting that we're doing that with Bruce as well in the uh, main Batman book. Uh, and like, you know, how much is he ba- like, how much is he actually being his own person or how much is he just trying to be like Bruce or how much he's trying to not be like Bruce and in doing so dictating who they're not, dic- you know, not making choices for himself and stuff like that. And that's interesting. Uh, I need to see get off the, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, hit the ground running yet, but I'm still, I'm still kind of waiting for a Nightwing book like Higgins. Cause I love Higgins Nightwing and, all the stuff he was doing with that has just been completely dropped. And while I like Seely, I really hope they either get Higgins back or Seely actually starts to deal with that because they completely dropped a bunch of the stuff Higgins was doing uh, when uh, the Grayson book happened. And, it, and I'm still pissed about that because there was a lot of arcs currently going on. He had like a new dynamic. He was in a new city because he was operating out of Chicago. He had new supervillains. He had new like roommates and stuff. He had like a new kind of his own Gordon who was like a reporter or not a reporter. It was like a tech person who worked for the Chicago PD, but everyone there hates masks. And uh, Tony Zuko was like a supervillain uh, or became a supervillain. And then we never got to see him actually in action. And I just do in, in like, he was dealing with Tony Zuko's daughter who he was working with for Wayne enterprises. And like, there was so many interesting things happening. We've just completely dropped that just to return to, dick being in gotham and stuff like that like i want them to actually go back to the time when dick was moving on and becoming his own superhero and he's just still doing the same undercover agent thing just this time he's wearing the nightwing suit and that's kind of annoying and i hope we fix that soon yep um that yeah um okay i think i have something i want to talk about for just a second um I recently bought a new Big Finish production, Old Doctors, New Monsters. It's the latest from Big Finish. It has the fifth Doctor going against the Weeping Angels, six against the Jadoon, the, the Rhino people, uh, seventh gets the Cigarettes, and for some reason the eighth Doctor is going up against the Suntarans, which I don't understand. That was the only weird hmm. choice. Uh, but the inter- what, what, that makes no sense. I know, but it's interesting because it does take place during the Time War, and had this really cool. But new Doctors. I mean, old doctors, new villains. I know that that was weird. Old, yeah, it was weird. Even though they drew it like the new Suntarans for some reason, I, I don't get that either. Ah, oh, that's so stupid. I know, but actually, I did like the the Suntaran one only because it took place during the Time War. And, um, it had this cool opening where the Doctor's on this planet; and it's all nice and peaceful. But then there's a time flux, and then he turns around, and the planet's now a complete, you know, wasteland because the Time War. That was cool. Um, the Jadoon. Were the Suntarans not allowed to be involved? Yeah, and it kind of is dealing with that. Um, I'm excited also for the war do- latest War Doctor audio drama, because they're actually going to delve into the whole why can't the Suntarans join the, su- the Time War um, even more. So I'm interested about that. Um, the Jadoon one I actually really liked. Um, it's got this Jadoon who's on trial for like abandoning his post because he got like infected by these natives of this planet that was going to get terraformed, and now he can talk, and he's learning, and he's... He's becoming a has emotions and feelings, so that was a pretty cool one. I haven't gotten around to the cigarettes and the weeping angels. I'm curious how they're going to. What's, do what's the cigarettes? Those were the guys from the crisp, the second Doctor, Chris, the tenth Doctor's first Christmas special, the ones that cut off his hand. Uh. Oh, those things that he like fights. And yeah, yeah. Like with the, the sword. Yeah, those guys. Um, I'm. Curious. Oh yeah, they were around for like five minutes in that episode. I'm curious how they're going to do the Weeping Angels in audio form. Oh, yeah, then we, like, hyped up the 10th Doctor. Like, this is a Doctor who doesn't give people second chances, and he's all badass, and then he just cries constantly, and isn't at all what we were promised. And now they're going to have the 5th Doctor go against the Weeping Angels. No, I'm talking about the 10th Doctor when he kills the cigarette guy. Oh, yeah, that one. Um... So yeah, I can't wait. To see. I haven't. I only got. How did How did Five handle the Weeping Angels? Oh, I haven't listened to that one yet. Oh, that's what I said. I only listened to two so far. I'm now on the cigarettes one with Seventh Doctor, and I'm curious to see how the Fifth handles the Weeping Angels. Yeah, because Five's probably going to be ten times cooler than Ten was. I really like Tenth Doctor actually. I know Ian does too. <sighs> five's Five is so much cooler. I'm more of a Four guy, and I actually like Eighth Doctor a lot. I mean, like for me, it's Two and Five. Uh... 
But yeah, that was, that's my little mini review of Big Finish's new production, which I bought. And I would recommend it to everybody, because Big Finish is awesome. They know their Doctor Who. Um, so yeah, that's it for the news, everybody. So, see you later. Mm-hmm.